the flash in the temple. Okay, I appeal to the Jews. I'm leaving again. I hope you understand what I'm saying. They're not asking him, when are you going to come back for five seconds or ten minutes? They're saying, when, are your, when is your physical arrival? We want you to be with us forever. They're not saying, how long, when are you going to come back temporarily for a few minutes? They wouldn't ask that, would they? They could care less for him coming back for a few minutes and break their hearts again and leave again. And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Now, what the preterists do, they tie the word world, ion, with the word generation. That's what they do. Over in Luke 21, they tie these two together. Go to Luke 21. Luke 21. You say, what's, why do we need this? You're going to run across these people. And there's a lot of people preaching it on radio and in preachers across the country. There's professors that believe it. It's a lot stronger doctrine than you think. I mean, it's all over America. And you really need to be prepared for some of this. In Luke 21, this is, this is Luke's account of Matthew's 24th chapter. So we're, gonna, we're going to just skip the first part of the chapter because that's, what, that's the question asked in Matthew 24. Sign of your coming. When he tells them all about the signs of his coming, his physical arrival in the end of the world. And he talks about Jerusalem being campused with armies in verse 20. And the desolation of Jerusalem is nigh when that happens. Well, they've been encamped by armies from 586 to to the Six-Day War of 1967. And he says, Anybody that's in Judea, the mountains around Jerusalem, run for your life. Don't enter into this nation during all of this occupation by these troops from all these nations, which was going on even during the time of Jesus, because the Roman garrisons were all over the city. For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. But one to the Jews that are with child, the women that give suck... In those days, for there shall be great distress in the land and wrath upon the Jewish people because they've gone after Baal in the grove. And he said, I won't even pity the women. I'll have their bellies ripped open and the babies' brains dashed out on those streets of Jerusalem. And the Jews shall fall by the edge of the sword and shall be led away captive into all nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the Gentile rule over the Jews is fulfilled because that's the context about Jerusalem being compassed with armies and Jerusalem being trodden down by these Gentile armies. Then he talks about signs in the sun and the moon and the stars in verse 25 upon the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring. This is Jesus' answer to the sign of his coming. Do you actually think from 35 A.D. to 70 A.D. all this stuff took place? He's, he is speaking to his apostles somewhere in 30, let's just say 32 A.D., you mean from 32 A.D. to 70 A.D. when the temple came down that all these things are happening, the Gentile rule over the Jews ceased? Here's the way some people look at it. Well, the Gentile rule ceased when they destroyed Israel in 70 A.D. and they destroyed Jerusalem and most of what was left of the Jews, they went to Masada off the Dead Sea and climbed up that big tall mountain and some of them jumped off and committed suicide. At least 900 of them jumped off of that big mountain at Masada so say, Gentile rule is over. You understand what I just said? They call that the end of the Gentile rule. Are you guys kidding? You must be kidding. The Jews have been slaughtered. 70 AD was just the beginning. They were all over the world being butchered and slaughtered throughout the world. I think Adolf Hitler killed 6 million of them, didn't he? I don't think 70 AD was the end of it. And where, where they tie end of the world, they tie it with this verse here. Well, let me read 28, and then I'll read the verse they tie it with. And when these things begin to come to pass, in verse 28, what things begin to come to pass? What is his answer? What is he saying all this about? About the sign of his coming and the end of the world. That's what... The end of the ion... Let me read it one more time to you. Ion. 
Now this is out of Kittle's dictionary, New Testament dictionary of Greek words. Ion, in the sense of prolonged time or eternity. The concepts of time and eternity merge in the use with prepositions suggesting infinite time. Sometimes the meaning is from a remote time, sometimes never, but sometimes there is a strong hint of eternity. This is especially true of the plural in Matthew 6, 13. Now let me read to you Ion out of Theological Dictionary of the New Testament. This is also... This is this was the one volume of Kittles. This